Hey, it's Yu Zhang, art therapist, business mentor, and coach. And in this channel, in Thirsty for Art, we talk all about starting and growing your online art therapy business. And if you do need any specific help with starting or growing your online art therapy business, you can check out my Visionary Art Therapist membership and I'll put a link in the description box below. Today, we are going to go in depth on non-clinical art therapy service and how that looks different from clinical art therapy. So I actually did a past video on non-clinical versus clinical art therapy. So if you don't know what the difference is between those two, then I definitely recommend you to watch that past video and come back to this video again, because in this video, we're going to actually go in depth about how the actual service might look different, non-clinical versus clinical art therapy. So that's what we're going to talk about. And the reason why I'm delving into this is because I have been actually getting questions about how non clinical art therapy work might look and feel different when you're actually doing it, especially from art therapists who have a more clinical background or clinical art therapy training. Um, and they have been working in the clinical realm for so long, maybe many years. So when you do try to switch to uh, non-clinical art therapy or you try to introduce that into your own business or practice, it can get really confusing. And um, you might not really know how to tell one is how is one different from the other because there are some similar similarities, right? Um, the root of it is really therapeutic art or art therapy. So I'm here to just kind of give you some clarity, especially if you're an art therapist and you want to introduce non-clinical art therapy services. Based on my experience, my own experience of doing these two types of work in the past, I am going to share what I know. So of course, these are not like hard and fast rules about you know art therapy at all, <laughs> but it can give you some guidelines and boundaries that you can use for yourself in your own practice or business. Uh, when you are going into the world of offering non-clinical services. So the first thing that I kind of see the difference is between those two services is that usually uh, there is a difference in specificity. <laughs> specificity. <laughs> um, so usually non-clinical art therapy services are quite specific Non-clinical offerings are, they have certain themes or issues or very specific topics or maybe even specific mediums that it focuses on, like art therapy or art materials, I mean. On the other hand, usually clinical art therapy services are quite broad and general. Uh, you know, it encompasses so much, right? So it's usually not that specific um, in terms of clinical work, right? Um, in the clinical world, it's like art therapist is an art therapist. They see everyone from those who are dealing with anxiety to OCD to trauma to personality disorders to whatever, all these things. Um, and that happens in the clinical realm. Um, and art therapy, what art therapists do is just do art therapy to help treat these people. Um, so it's a kind of general, I would say. And of course, you know, it's not always the case, but I do see this kind of uh, a commonality or it just happens more often that non-clinical services are more specific. So with non-clinical art therapy, um, as I said, services are usually more specific and it has a focus on serving specific types of people. Also, services are specifically titled or named, right? Uh, for example, I had a service in the past that was titled self-discovery through art. Or another name or title of, this, of the non-clinical service could be like expressive painting to release anger or creating oracle cards for 
X, I don't know, personal growth or whatever, or using clay to improve self-esteem. So there's a specific topic or uh, uh, issue or right a focus in um, non-clinical eye therapy offerings. And, you know, in clinical work, it's usually just sessions are sessions, art therapy sessions are sessions, uh, especially in regards to one-to-one work, which is about the most of how clinical art therapy is delivered. And speaking of specificity, I want to add a quick note about names. <laughs> um, because I think I do think that there's a huge difference in terms of names. Non-clinical art therapy most likely do not claim to be art therapy. I'm talking from art therapist to art therapist here, so you guys know, you know, I'm not talking to clients of art therapy here, right? So we know what art therapy is. Um, And we talk about it in this way, like there are different types of services, clinical, non-clinical, whatever. And so we call it kind of non-clinical art therapy here. But of course, out in the world, when you do talk with clients, when you're marketing yourself, promoting yourself, when you put things on your website, then definitely you're not going to call your service art therapy for doing non-clinical work, most likely. Of course, that's because... In the U.S., at least, you know, that's where I am in. And I can't really talk about anywhere else, of course. But in in the U.S., at least, some states uh, regulate the term and the title art therapy and art therapist and and define it as psychotherapy and, and see it as strictly psychotherapy and mental health treatment. So art therapy is a mental health treatment. Uh, solely. So in those states where they define it and regulate it that way, of course, you cannot do, you cannot say you're doing art therapy when you don't have the license that the state regulates, right? The art therapist license. So of course, a non-clinical art therapy type of service cannot be art therapy per se, unless the service provider, you, Uh, is licensed as an art therapist or licensed as a social worker, a counselor, marriage family therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever, right, in that state. So in those states where you want to do non-clinical art therapy work, then you might have to often name it something else, right? You might not be able to use the word art therapy. So uh, other names could be used like creative arts, Right, therapeutic arts, healing art. So there might be other names, right? <laughs> um, so for those of us who are clinically trained with a master's in art therapy, um, we can do non-clinical services before we are licensed, right? But once we're licensed, then that's a different story. Um, so that's what really opens up the door for a lot of people who just just has graduated and they're working towards their license. They can still work with non-clinical uh, services, right? But it has to be called something else, right? Because it's really strictly defined uh, in those states that have regulations around art therapy and the use of that term. Then definitely, you have to you know call it something else, and of course change your services so that it's more non-clinical, which I will be going over right now. (laughs) All right. So the second thing that is a big difference between non-clinical versus clinical art therapy is that um, non-clinical art therapy is done in mostly like non-medical settings. So that might include, for example, community centers, art studios, retreat centers, after school programs, even just in schools, perhaps. Uh, it could happen commonly in private practices because it just depends on the business owner who runs the thing. Um, maybe even university settings, right? Like these kind of non-clinical settings, um, that's where a lot of the uh, non-clinical services can be provided. On the other hand, uh, clinical art therapy services are most likely, very most likely done in clinical or medical settings. Um, oftentimes in psychiatric hospitals um, and mental health clinics or even treatment centers. So these are places where clients 
mental health information, uh, medical information, basically is collected and maintained. In those settings, you know, art therapy is considered a mental health treatment, right? So those things will be a part of client's medical records. And oftentimes there is usually a lot of paperwork and documentation involved because it's dealing with people's health and mental health. On the other hand, the non-clinical services, mostly done in non-clinical settings, I said, non-medical settings, I said, <laughs> as I said, it can happen in public settings like outside, uh, maybe even in parks, uh, community settings, people gather together, it's just like public and in fairs, perhaps in conferences, also museums can be another place that non-clinical art therapy can be often um, delivered. So the setting for non-clinical services is quite broad and actually limitless. Um, you know, it can happen in many, many different places, outside, inside, privately, if not privately, publicly, right? Uh, but you just have to keep in mind that clinical idea based services can only happen behind closed doors and in full confidentiality. Uh, most often, <laughs> of course, not always the case because uh, just the way that the clinical art therapy services delivered might be different depending, right? Okay. So I want to add a little side note here that maybe might <laughs> give you a little confusion, but I just wanted to say this, like non-clinical art therapy services actually can be done in medical or clinical settings. Uh, for example, there can be actually art-based programs within hospitals, right? It, within hospital settings, and they're likely mostly group programs, right? Or kind of like programs where it gathers the community. So in those medical settings, non-clinical services can be, you know, done, um, but there's always a clear, clear, clear indication uh, that that is non-clinical. So the hospital definitely tells people or lets people know this is not, non this is not art therapy. It's not about treatment, uh, but it's more about perhaps support, all right? Or just giving people more outlet, right? To be creative perhaps, or relieve some stress, that's all. Uh, so in those cases, definitely they're not gonna say it's art therapy because it's not. Uh, it's just a different type, right? It's very non-clinical. And in those kind of settings where non-clinical is delivered in clinical settings or medical settings, you definitely don't have access to the client's medical records. Definitely not. And there is a definite goal that it's not for treating any mental health issues and that service is not is is not uh, gonna stand in for any psychologist sessions or um, psychiatrist sessions or any psychotherapy sessions. So hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right. The next big difference between clinical versus non-clinical art therapy service is actually goals. Actually, this is I feel like the foundation of the difference between those two because. The difference in the goals actually determine everything else, whatever happens in the session, right? And how that looks like. So definitely um, take note of this part. So, you know, instead of treating a mental illness, you know, non-clinical service is actually focused on non-diagnosable issues or challenges. It's everything else other than diagnosis and maybe even like broader or inclusive topics um, like grief, uh, which so many people right, experience in many stages of life, right? self-empowerment or self-esteem perhaps, uh, spirituality, self-development is another one, um, maybe even financial, you know, financial things or relationship-wise. Um, creativity is another big one and that's also often a goal of non-clinical services and self-love that's another big one um so lots of different uh goals that are not about diagnoses uh or treating any of that so if we can actually now switch to clinical art therapy that it's going to look very very different right clinical art therapy example goals could be like treating panic disorder, 
right? Treating PTSD, which is a diagnosis, treating the source of the trauma or like how to manage a trauma, treating bipolar disorder, you know, all these things that are in the DSM, which is the Diagnostic Statistics Manual, um, the book that people use to diagnose um, in psychotherapy, right? So well, on the other hand, I know I shared some examples um, previously, but I want to give you a little bit more here. Um, like non-clinical services could have goals around self-expression, confidence, um, letting go of the past, improving relationships, stress management, um, actually practicing mindfulness, listening to one's intuition, uh, things like that, like abundance even, right? Um, so those are kind of the different example goals that uh, non-clinical services can really focus on. If you look at the goal of the service, then you'll probably know if it is non-clinical versus clinical. All right, so the next thing is boundary setting. So non-clinical services often have to have certain boundaries that clinical services might not actually have. So non-clinical services, as you know, cannot step into the boundaries, right? Cannot step into the realm of clinical service, right? Because clinical service does deal, do deal with diagnosis. That's something that non-clinical services cannot touch, right? So because of this fact, a boundary has to be set up, right? For example, you may have to boundary set in your practice or service so that you don't actually see people, anybody who has a diagnosis. That might be a boundary that you can set. Um, But also another example would be like, you may see people who have a mental health diagnosis, but you're very clear that your role is uh, separated from treating their diagnosis, which is, you know, like the psychotherapist and the psychiatrist's job and not yours, which is non, definitely non-clinical, non-medical. Um, so when you set your boundaries, you may say that you only see clients who might already have their own psychiatrist or psychologist and they're treating, receiving treatment for those things uh, if they have a diagnosis. Or you may just not work with anyone with a diagnosis. <laughs> um, but in the case where you don't work with someone with a diagnosis, you can simply just give out referrals. You can definitely do that and just not leave that potential client hanging, right? Um, so that's one way to do some boundary setting, but also um, direct people where they need to go. The other difference that uh, can really clearly differentiate between non-clinical and clinical services um, is actually payment, right? Um, It has to do with payment methods and or the way that payment is set up and packages too. With clinical services, in many states there are, well, in all states, I believe, um, there are rules regarding receiving payment from clients, right? Uh, and one, for example, is that you cannot be paid in advance. Your sessions can be only paid per session. You cannot do like a bulk payment of uh, upfront payment for however many sessions, uh, meaning you cannot offer packages, right? Uh, so you're only either receiving the payment right before the session starts, or a couple minutes before the session starts, or right afterwards. So one session, one payment. That's how it usually is like, especially in the US. Or if you are working through insurance then, or accepting insurance, which is also another hallmark of clinical art therapy, um, it, then you can claim the sessions, right? By uh, submitting paperwork and getting paid after the session, of course. In non-clinical services, your payment is determined by your own business structure or practice. So it's just how you want to handle things. There's freedom and flexibility in that, right? You can determine whether you want to be paid after each session or before the session, or you can also maybe choose to offer packages, right? Offering several uh, sessions as a package or a bundle that clients can sign up and pay for once upfront, right? 
Another uh, feature of non-clinical service payment-wise is like there is a further flexibility in terms of offering payment plans. So payment plans can be an option that non-clinical services can have, right? So if you, for example, if you have a three-month package, you can have like a, a package that covers three months worth of sessions and you can have um, a one-time payment price of X amount and then offer the option of a monthly payment for three months. Uh, payment made once every month. They're just dividing it by the month. All in all, uh, if you can only just take away one thing from this video, it, that is that the, the biggest differentiator between clinical versus non-clinical work is really that clinical work almost always involves a diagnosis, right? And the treatment of the diagnosis and the client's medical records. So that is a big differentiating feature of clinical art therapy service. And non-clinical work has none of that, <laughs> right? Probably doesn't have any of that. So let me know, um, what do you think of doing in terms of clinical versus non-clinical art therapy work? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you have any questions about non-clinical art therapy uh, services or anything like that, definitely check out my podcast. I'm going to link it in the description box. Again, thank you so much for watching. Um, hope that this was helpful. I'll talk to you in the next video. All right. Bye-bye.